Hello, hello. Welcome to the first episode of... I don't know what this even is. Just studying, I guess. That's what we'll end up calling this. So today we are going to go over a lot of things. Um, this would probably be like a really long stream. Probably a longer by maybe double than what I hope that most streams are. But I have a lot of things to go over. Um, I've been working on quite a few little scenes here. So I can go over my whole workflow. Um, I've been kind of changing a lot of the ways I, I approach Japanese. Based on input and just things I've listened to and read over the last couple weeks. I've ultimately decided that a totally free approach is going to be the best way for most people, even though I've sunk quite a bit of, of money into my personal studies. It's not something feasible for everyone. So today we're going to go over all of the free tools that I've been using um, and moving towards using. Until now, I've been using uh, Wanikani and Learn Japanese Pod 101. I know those are two quite expensive resources. So I'm, I am going to continue using those personally. Uh, I'll even show them off during this stream, how I'm using them. But for the most part, we want to show off kind of where we are um, able to get to, uh, with a free, you know, a non-subscription model. We'll be using Anki, uh, mostly, but also some other free tools to do like subtitle translation, or sub subtitle to Anki decks, um, and then from there we'll, we'll just kind of play around with it. Uh, firstly, I will just go ahead and get this study screen off here. Uh, we'll jump right into Kana. So if you don't have a basic understanding of Kana, probably the best thing I have recommended for you will be uh, part of this this intro here. Um, if all these characters just look like squiggles to you, then that's okay. I mean, this channel is for you still. Um, this is where I was less than a year ago. I'm just thinking all these were, were squiggles. Um, but once you put a, about, I don't know, it took me up to a month of study on on these kana, hiragana, katakana, uh, plus what you don't see here, diagraphs, on both the both of the kana charts, which I will get into a little bit a little bit here. Um, the it, it'll make it easier if you already have studied up to Hiragana Katakana to follow where I'm at with all this. But if not, um, that the first portion of this uh, broadcast is going to be dedicated to showing you how you can uh, get to proficiency with Hiragana and Katakana. So without further ado, let me go ahead and pull up uh, Bluestacks. Bluestacks is something, if you don't have an Android phone... You can use BlueStacks to use to, to follow along with uh, the Android-only apps that I'm going to use here. Now, there's definitely iOS alternatives to both these apps. I personally don't know what they are, so you'll have to ask someone else, um, maybe on the Learn Japanese subreddit, uh, about how to go about doing these same things on your iOS phone. But at the very end of the day, if you have a Windows computer, you can use BlueStacks to kind of emulate. Um, Android, even though they don't like to call it a, an emulator, it is kind of an emulator. I'm going to go ahead and pull BlueStacks up here. So right now I have Anki Droid open on BlueStacks. We're going to go ahead and close out Anki Droid and go back to the home screen. This is what you'll get uh, minus a couple of the apps here whenever you install Anki Droid. Um, you're going to get some pop-ups and stuff. I mean, that's just how Android works, I feel like, these days. But the apps that we're going to be using today are Kanji Study, 
Gisho, which is my preferred dictionary. You might have your own preferred dictionary, that's fine. Um, but Gisho really works for all the things that I want it to do. Um, and it also tells me what Wadikani level um, my kanji are at. So if I look up something and uh, it's, it's it requires a certain Wadikani level, it'll tell me right then and there. That's really why I've settled with it so far. Gboard, you don't need Gboard for Bluestacks. There's no real reason to use Gboard, but I have it installed to show you what the layout looks like and how to use that layout. Um, just Kana is what's going to help us most with this Kana sheet to the right here. And I have a couple of comic book readers and an ebook reader, um, just so for later I will have those installed. And I have a bunch of uh, manga and you know what you consider comic books um, for these two. I don't know which one's going to work the best, is why I have both of them installed. And then I have uh, RTK on Amazon Kindle. But we're actually not going to use the Kindle version. I have it, I have it here, so you can, as a recommendation, I can just recommend it that it, it works really well. Uh, Twenty five bucks will get you the RTK uh, set, and really the the lowest cost to entry is the Kindle version of the RTK. Um, but we'll go right back into Anki Droid for now, just so it's up. And um, these are going to be my focuses. So I have the Genki and the RTK decks in Anki. If you don't know what Anki is, that's okay. We're going to get into all this. Um, and I, <clears throat> my focuses are at, on Animal Crossing, Akira Kurosawa with Yojimbo, and the Netflix series Terrace House. Um, and I've made these two, Akira Kurosawa and Terrace House decks myself. That's something we're going to go ahead and get into near the end of the stream, is how to create Anki decks based on your favorite TV shows, um, whether they come from Netflix or other sources. This Akira Kurosawa film is a uh, classic 1950s black and white samurai movie, and Terrace House is a modern day reality show based in Japan, uh, and they pretty much have fully conversational Japanese in it. There's nothing like Kago. Uh, you're not going to learn like uh, Japanese like uh, you need in a business environment. So you know having a varied uh, list of things to, to draw from will really help later. Um, and then the Animal Crossing New Horizons is I mean I bought Animal Crossing New Horizons specifically so I could learn Japanese with it. Uh, and you'll also see that I've done all my reviews for the day. So we'll be doing custom study. If you don't know anything about OnkyDroid, stay tuned. We're going to get into all that. Um, the only other app that I really, like, fully recommend is Kanji Study. This Kanji Study app has everything that you're going to need on, on the free level. Um, so I have the paid-for version, which is quite expensive. Um, I don't think that you should pay for it unless you feel the need to pay for it, um, especially if you're on iOS. Uh, paying for an emulated app is going to be a hard ask, but... Uh, for the most part, I put my fails in here. I put my fails in uh, Kana to repeat uh, or uh, Kanji to repeat. This is not synced with my actual Android device. This is just something that I've I've opened up on BlueStacks and I've added to because um, today we're going to go through just Kana, and I'm probably going to fail some. You know, I've been I've been at this for a while, but I don't see some of these Kana very often, especially with the diagraphs. Uh, on the katakana end. So one of the first things we're going to do is going to do a, uh, a couple tests. Um, the first quiz that I'm going to do is going to be on all hiragana, all katakana, and all diagraphs associated with both kana sets. And the way we do that is we hit quiz. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> so we'll hit, we'll make sure all of these are checked. And at the bottom you can see kyo, sho, cho, no. So these are all diagraphs. There are two of these kana, uh, but they are they're together. They make one they make one uh, syllable. That's what you could you could say. I think it's called a moda, mora, mora but uh, they are syllables in the end of the day. So kya, kyu, kyo, sha, or sorry, sha, shu, sho, cha, chu, cho. Nya, nyu, nyo. 
so we're going to test on all of those as well as the regular Conda that you see in the, the chart to the right there. That's going to be the first thing we do here. And my whole philosophy is that you say them aloud as you go through them. Uh, you want to associate the sounds of the words with the, the reading of the words, or the, the digraphs. And so we'll do... Mm, so you can pick from both of these. One starts with the Roman character, one ends with the Roman character. I think what we'll do is... We'll start with the Kana, and we'll end with the, the Roman character. So Cha, we'll just go through all these, and that'll be the first part of our stream here. Go, Boo, Tzu, Sha, Ju, uh, Shu, no, Shu, Do, Biu, Me, Pa, Wa, I, Te, Po, Mio, Cha, Mi, Biu, Miu, Jo, Mo, Ke, Za, Fu, Ho, Sa, Cho, Yu, No, Hyo, O, Hya, Gi, Hyo, Ta, So, Bo, Pya, Oops, I clicked the wrong one. Zu, Nyo, Ke, Nope, it's Ge, because of the Rindaku, Ge, Ni, Ku, Su, E, Du, Ya, Ko, I, U, De, Yo, Yu, Hi, Ba, Fu. It's going to be a boot because of the Rindaku again. Boo. Chi, Zu, Pu, Ga, Yu, E, Gya, Ki, Nyu, Ji, Yu, Go, O, Ka, No, Gu, Kyo, Pe, Ho, E, Chi, Chi, Da, Pyo, Yu, Dia, Pyo, Pyo, Kyo, Pa, Pi, Zi, Ka, Bo, O, Sho, Shu, Shu, G, D, So, C, N, M, H, J, N, G, S, D, D, Z, or Z. So that's a katakana Z, and I always mess that one up, but uh, today I've caught myself. T, B, A, J. Cho, di, du, ma, yo, shi, de, bi, chu, ki, mia, pi, pe, ho, uh, no, wa. So there is, a, so fu would be without this little this little down stem here. Wa is what this is. Wa Sho Sa Ne Te Bia E Pyo Da No Da would 
would be with the line over it and I think uh, an O or a Fu. So Fu with the line over it would be Da. Um, I messed that up, so it's going to be uh, Du. P uh, Hya. Ta. Yo. N. Go. Na. Ze. Sa. N. D. T. Ne. G. Yo. Pe. M. Be. De. N. So. N. Hu. Gu. Ge. Nya. Myo. N. Ho. Zo. Bi. Mi. Yo. Ma. Pyo. Ko. Ha. Hyo. 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 Getting ahead of myself. Ya. Mya. Fu. Cha. Pyo. Ku. Na. Shi. Ya. Do. Sho. Ya. Da. Po. U. Kya. Da. Ji. Ke. Mo. Kya. Ni. To. Jo. Pa. Ju. Shu. Kyu. Nya. Byo. Ba. Yu. A. A. G. I guess it would be du. Du. Mm. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell the katakana ju, zu, du, apart from the, uh, from the rest of them. There's four of these. But once you get them, you got them. Do, pu, ki, bi, pi, su, sha, oops, sha, ha. Okay, so we missed like maybe seven um, at like first glance, but the, the three that we actually missed, we missed click two, and I actually did get one like completely wrong. Uh, so that's something that you can do to start off every single one of your sessions until you feel like, well, I'm just 100%ing this every time, which is where I got to. And I stopped for a long time. I just stopped testing Kana for months. Um, and I've only come back to it recently um, because I realized that sometimes I'm not seeing some of these Katakana. Some of these Katakana are rarely used. Um, if you don't know much about Katakana or Hiragana, um, a brief overview, I don't want to get into the details, but Hiragana is used in uh, Japanese words, and Katakana is used in both names of like animals or uh, loan words, like uh, things that come from the Western, you know, uh, countries into Japan. Um, things like pen, you know, simple, would be written in katakana. Whereas stuff like arigato, arigato which I'm going to pronounce some of the R's, um, because that's how most English speakers might un already understand the words, um, would be written in hiragana. So I'm not in a place where I do a lot of output. Um, because I feel like if you do output too early, you can develop bad habits. But also, whenever I do say words, I do try to use uh, the accents that I know, or the phonetics that I know. Um, so instead of saying, like, arigato uh, day to day, I would say arigato. I would use the phonetics associated with the kana that I do know. So that's something that you should keep in mind as well. Even if I am, like, saying things in a way that is understandable for most people, you should be saying things in a way that you know people speak them. Uh, whether that is with a, a Japanese accent or 
if you're not going for that, I mean, do, do your own thing. But uh, that's just how that's just how I'm going to to present it for now. Eventually, um, I will be outputting, and then from there we can we can work on uh, the accent or the the uh, phonetics or the, uh, the pitch accent, especially. So those are things that I'm, I am already working in my deck. But for now, um, especially this first episode, we're going to go ahead and to stray away from, you know, too much confusion. So if we go to details here, we would put uh, Shaw in our in our kanji, our arcana to study, and chu. So it's chu, pia, pia, and uh, pia chu and sha. We would put into kanji study, but those are all digraphs, so I don't think that actually works. I don't think that works. Eh, it kind of works. I don't think that really works. So digraphs don't really work in this app, uh, kanji study. But if you're messing up, if you're only messing up digraphs, you know you you're you're on the right track. So if I was messing up things like um, ma or ta, you know, if I was messing up like actual um, just singular kana, then there would be more of a concern. Um, and then you would come back in here. I don't think you would actually be able to do this without paying for it. I think cu custom sets are a paid for uh, an add-on for this, but kanji to repeat, or kana to repeat, you would come in here and do a study, uh, multiple choice, me, and you would be able to pick from a set, like me, wo, g, Oops. <laughs> I was thinking the particle. Whoa, oh. But you don't use the particle in Katakana. So th this is kind of how it would present itself if you did have uh, the means to, to make custom sets. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Uh, so we'll move on from here uh, to... What should we do next? I think we should maybe move on to the, the textbooks that I'm using. Because that's a big thing. Is you don't want to use the wrong textbook, in my opinion. The wrong textbook can, you know, be inefficient at best. Or lead you down the wrong path at worst. Uh, so, I haven't really committed to Genki yet. But it's the, book, it's the only physical book that I own. Um, I have RTK. Uh, on Kindle, and that was easy enough to pick up because I feel I felt like I might as well have it. But I am if I, if you're gonna if you're wanting to pay for a resource, if there's a resource that you want to sink some money into, I have been using Wanikani and it's super it's super effective, even if it's not recommended because of the cost. But we're gonna get into books real quick. So we'll get rid of this. Do stacks. We'll go back to the video preview wall. And we will go to Can we just bear with me. We will get better at this as well. Uh, we'll move to Oh. So this is my my books here. I have a couple of them in a tab. Um, I'll just let you read through those for just a half a second, but I'm going to come back and read through the parts that are important.
So Genki is one of the most recommended textbooks for Japanese study. Um, it is used in a lot of college courses. It is also used in a lot of self-study courses. Um, chances are, if you've dabbled at all in Japanese study, you've heard of Genki. Uh, so this edition here, I, I don't know if it's the newest. I want to say I don't. Um, but for the most part, it's going to be everything that you need to know. Um, so the structure of the book goes as in, it gives you sentences, it gives you um, mostly sentences, but it pr breaks them down into, into vocab, grammar, and practice with uh, notes on on what's important. Uh, so we're gonna, just going to jump through all of the first couple pages here that we've already gone through in terms of, um, you know, overviews, the, the kana, hiragana, katakana, and diagraphs included. We're going to get right into kind of how the writing system works. Um, Genki does a really great job at simplifying uh, what it all means at the end of the day. Um, kind of shows you like a tree, how they got the, how they got the syllable for a tree, um, how they got the syllable for sun. Uh, it, re it really shows you how kanji are put together. Um, day plus moon equals bright. Person plus tree equals rest. It, it makes it way easier whenever you, you already understand what are called radicals, uh, which would be like the person radical, the tree radical. You combine them and it makes rest. Uh, the water radical, the blue radical, together makes clean. Um, it can really help tell a story. And that's what I'm here to really portray, is that early on, telling your own stories about where radicals turn into kana and um, form words, it, or turn into, yeah, kanji, where radicals morph into kanji and form words is really the, the biggest thing that I'm trying to drive home. And that's the key to learning, is telling a story between the radical and the kanji um, that goes along with the vocab. So these are some of the the early pages that you'll get in Genki. Uh, so, Ohayo, Ohayo gozaimasu, Konbanwa, Konbanwa, uh, Konnichiwa, Sayonara, Oyasumi Nasai, Arigato, Arigato gozaimasu, Sumimasen, Iie. So, this, this whole page here with just con kana study, you be able to you would be able to read all this. You might not know the vocab associated. You might not know that uh, Ohio means good morning, or sumimasen means excuse me or sorry. But you'll you'll be able to put together the words, and then you come down in here in this next listing, and you'll be able to read the definitions. Good morning, good evening, goodbye, thank you. You know these kinds of things. Um, really helpful whenever it's broken down lesson by lesson. So this one lesson here is meant to teach us uh, all of those words. Uh, as well as cultural notes. Uh, the, the biggest thing about Japan is, you know, the culture is, is very, uh, it, it can seem strict. But it's really not constricting. It's just a different kind of culture. Um, and these these notes really help kind of get the point across and in, in how you interact with a, a situation, whether it's business or personal. Um, and then there's a lot of work pages here. And every one of these pages has an associated uh, an associated audio field. Oops, didn't need to drag that. But there's an audio file in another folder that I have that will let you listen to a native speaker say the same sentence. So you don't have to take it from me that it says Takashi. You can hear someone else say Takashi, Takeshi, Takeshi, Takeshi. You know, like, um, however I'm mispronouncing, you can listen to a, a native speaker say that same word. It's that same name. Um, and it gives you a list of vocab. So you would really want to take this vocab and stick it into an Aki deck, one at a time. You would study it maybe this whole week. You would study these words as well as maybe these countries. Uh, but then next week you would be really primed and ready to tackle this grammar section. 
you'd be really primed and ready to tackle all of these sentences and know exactly what they mean. So we could go through one of these, but I don't want to dabble too much in, you know, getting caught up in an actual lesson before it's time. Uh, I, I really feel like today's video is pushing me to just to go over everything. Um, it's everything that you might see on this channel in the future. Maybe someday we do go through like three lessons of Genki. Maybe because that's just where I'm going to be at that day. But for now, we're going to move on to remembering the kanji. Remembering the kanji is super new to me. Um, I didn't think that I would want to go this route, to be honest, like even just a couple weeks ago. Uh, for, for one, con remembering the kanji doesn't give you a reading. So what I mean by that is that this book here is meant to associate the kanji with the English translation. And that's great, but it's not an end-all be-all situation here. So you can see that the two side, this the two uh, horizontal strokes equals two. This the box with the legs equals four, but it doesn't tell you that those radicals are the legs radical. It doesn't even tell you that four is pronounced yon or she. You know, it, the, this book here is a little too simplistic in my opinion. There's a, there's a little bit more you can learn without context than what this book tries to provide. Now, I can't say that I don't recommend it because once you know what I means, once you know the radical for, once you know the kanji for I, then putting I with me is an easy task. I means te, uh, I means me. Whereas rice field it means ta, you know, ta and te, ta and me. Sorry, keep messing those up. But the the once you know the association, you can then learn the reading. So I get where this book's coming from, and I think I'll put some time into it. I have an RTK deck like I mentioned up front with Anki. But even so. I think this is a little too simplistic for anyone other than an absolute beginner. Which is okay. If you're an absolute beginner, I think this works great. I think you should go through RTK like no one's business. You shouldn't let anyone dissuade you from going through RTK. I'm going to later show my methods through going through Wanikani and why I think Wanikani is actually better than remembering the kanji even if it is slightly out of context in t at times. But we're firstly going to move on to t uh, Take Him. So Take Him is the ultimate grammar guide. Anyone who you talk to about studying Japanese will ask you first and foremost, well, did you read Take Him? Uh, so Take Him really goes through every little detail. It talks about the small, ya, you, and yo, um, for the diagraphs, it talks about how to pronounce those, um, as well as it just gets into all of the grammar. Da. It goes into da, ta. You know, uh, past forms, present forms. This is your all-encompassing grammar guide. And it's totally free. There's a PDF version of it, which is what we're, what we're looking at now. But there's also a whole website for it, a PDF, uh, or a, sorry, an EPUB. There's an app for it. There's everything that you can think of. This website is really great. So once you get to a certain point in your studies, you'll you'll understand kind of, well, I've got all this grammar, or sorry, I've got all this kanji, but all these words and meanings and stuff, but I, I need some grammar to put them to. And that's whenever you'll know that it's time to pick up uh, Take Him's Grammar Guide. All of the links to these books will be in the description, whether it's on Amazon or otherwise. I think we'll move on from this. I think that's a good enough overview on, on the books. 
Those are the only three books that I'm currently using. We'll move on and go to... Let's see... We should do some Anki study real quick. Let's go ahead and do Anki. So this might not this might break everything. Nope, sure didn't. So this is my Anki browser currently. See if I can't break everything by closing some things. Yeah, broke everything. Look at that. So, give me just a second. We'll get this back up. There it is. This is my Anki uh, on Windows. I have quite a few add-ons. I want to go over them one by one here. See if I can't pull this add-ons window into OBS real quick. Should take two seconds. As long as I name it correctly. Oof. There we go. I'm trying to avoid having to pull anything in on a fly like this. But this is the easiest way to give an overview. Um, in Anki, oops, there we go. In Anki, I have advanced browser, hint hotkeys, which I haven't used, Japanese support, which is a vital part of my Anki flow, um, Macabre Unidic Japanese Dictionary, which apparently is the best one. Uh, the MIA dictionary, which is not technically a dictionary, it's not something you look up words in. It's a parsing dictionary. Um, and then the MIA Japanese add-on does so much work for you. Um, and Morph Man does a ton of work for us. So, uh, I would consider MIA Japanese and Morph Man, like, essential for Japanese study through Anki. Um, but Review Heat Map is just something fun I added, which gives us this little, this little chart here. Chart our progress every day. And now that I've closed that window, everything broke once again. So we'll, we will go ahead and uh, turn that back off forever. We'll even delete it because we're not going back into the add-ons menu. <laughs> um, so the Anki program is a free SRS, which means uh, Spaced Repetition System. It's a free program that many people have already created decks for and is easy enough that you can create your own decks for. Uh, so my philosophy on SRS comes is inspired a lot from Matt vs. Japan, Yoga MIA, and uh, I've learned a lot from Dave from Otaku, so I just wanted to shout those guys out once again. I've shouted them all out a couple times, but I don't know if those videos will ever make it to YouTube. So, from Anki, I'm just going to do a couple of reviews. I'm going to do a self-study on my Animal Crossing deck, and just see how many I actually know, versus how many I need to still study. So we'll go into uh, my Animal Crossing deck, and we will do Custom Study. Increase today's card limit by 10, that's fine. And we'll study now. There's no reading for that, interesting. Um, so in that case, we'll hit Control S and we'll bring up the dictionary. That means lots of, to wait. And it might be a small suit. So it might just be mate, yeah, so it's mate. Ah, mate -san. So I think there's a missing character, or missing name here, um, which this deck will show as Anki at all times when we go to the screenshot. Ah, 
not that Anki san. So, uh, hey, hold on a second. Anki san. Or excuse me, I guess is what the English version of the game translates to. Ha, matte Anki san. Excuse me, Anki san. Dochira ka. Do, dochira ka o. And these are still not showing up. Interesting. Sen. So selection, choice picking. So sen de dene. So make a, make a selection. Do you want to make a selection? Is what I'm thinking this will be. Please choose your style. Okay, here we go. Here's the reading. Uh, it gives us a pitch, pitch accent. So do chira. Do chira ka o. Eidan de ne. Eidan. Eidan. Eidan de ne. So I'm not going to take too much time going over this because I feel like I'm pronouncing it wrong. But you can go into uh, the Forvo dictionary from here and hopefully, nope, no, no results found. There's no one saying that particular word in the Forvo dictionary, which is okay. We'll just say we need to see that one again. Please choose your style, even though we 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 really kind of understood what it was saying. I just want to, I want the chance to pronounce it again. Uh, but we also don't want to hold ourselves too tight to that, to that again button. Um, that's how your reviews will end up stacking up pretty hard. Hontokai, um, it's a question. Uh, like, seriously? For real? Yeah, for real, Anki? So, Honto, Honto is going to be flat. That's what this line represents. Hontokai. For real, Honky? Uh, so we got that one right. Ja, Yoroshiku Danamo. Danamo. So I don't know what Danamo means. I can't ever figure that out. No website really gives you a definition for Danamo. But based on context, it seems like something Tom Nook says a lot. <laughs> so, uh, Ja, ja um, would be like, hey, or Yoroshiku, please. So... There's not a definition, holy cow. So this is the kind of card that I would want to go in and add my own definition to if I knew for sure what it was. And I would do that by hitting L. No, nope, not even L. You just hit browse, I guess. Come in here and hit a meaning. You know, you type in a meaning. Oh, my browser window is broken. Great, 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 great. So let's, let's fix my browser window real quick. I'll key browser. There we go. So you come in here and you would start typing in whatever it was, the, the meaning for Yoroshiku Udanamo, uh, which I think would be, hey, yes, something like that. Hey, let's start. Hey, get started. But I don't want to make assumptions just yet. So we'll just say um, on this one, honestly, I think we're going to hit K, which is... Oh, no, not this one. We, we, we don't know this one, so we're going to hit again. Uh, Yodoshiku Donamo. So we're going to hit K and say we know it because there's not actually a target. If you go into Browse, there's not a target here either, so it's not helping us. This card's not helping us. We're going to go ahead and hit K, which means known. And that's just going to get it out of our way, probably forever. Hi. Daijobu Desne, so I do know this one. Um, it just means, uh, are you ready or are you good? Like, hi would be yes. Daijobu, uh, is it okay? Desne is kind of just like a question. So you're good to go, right? Great, we're all here. Hi, Daijobu Desne. Great, we're all here. So based on context um, with the scene, you kind of can, can gather all that. I'm gonna say it's good. To you kotode, you kotode. I have no idea what that means. You kotode. But first things first, yes. Koto kotode. Ko you koto you kotode. To you kotode. 
So that green symbolizes that it falls on the second mora. Koto, koto, yu koto, to yu koto de. We'll beat the pitch accent on that. So we're going to say again on that, since we didn't know it. Dochira ka o. Can't remember that one again. Cannot remember. Dochira ka o. Edan dena. Please choose your style, which I guess is what we stand for style. Or just selection. Sen. But we're looking at Dachibu. Echi. Echibu. Which is this one? Echibu. Echinbu. Echin. Echin de ne. Dochira ka o echin te de 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 ne. I'm still I'm still butchering that really hard. We're gonna say again. Mita ano. I don't know what that is. Truth, reality, sincerity. Jitsu. Mieta ano jitsu wa. Hmm. Is it? Hmm. I don't. I don't have a good guess for this. They all look. Oh well. That's kind of a translation. Uh, you know, the translation team kind of takes liberties where they can. But I guess that's what it means. They look like, they smell like, and they even taste like. Meita ano jitsu wa. We're, we're going to go ahead and say good on that. Because that's, that's going to be a hard one. Should we say good? No. Let's just say again. And next time we'll hit known if we if we really have a problem with it. To you ko to de. To you ko to de. Koto was our target. Um, yes, first things first. Koto. Command. So first things first, yes. We're going to go ahead and say, uh, again, just because I've, I've messed that up twice now. Dojira ka o endene. Something en. Echindene. Dojira ka. Dojira ka o. Please choose your style. So this means selection. Echinen, echindene. Wish we had some pronunciations. Forvo is not doing any good right now. We're gonna bury this card. Can we bury this card? I don't remember how. Anyway, please make a selection. We're just going to hit show answer and hit good. They look like them. They taste like them. That whole, that whole thing. Koto de. To you koto de. Um, yes, first things first, Koto. Kona. Jidato. Unda. So I don't know either of these. And for some reason, it's giving me I plus two words. Is really may maybe my main issue I'm having right now. Is that we want to be looking for I plus one. I is where we're currently at, plus one would be our next level. I plus two is a little bit hard going. So con would be a feeling or a sensation, whereas 
Oh, well, would be to think or consider. So, Kona. Kona Kanji Dato. Kanji Dato would be like a feeling. Omo would be to consider. Omo and Da. And Da is a particle that just gives like a. Uh, as far as I'm aware, Da just kind of implies implies that something matters to uh, it could be like if you use Da incorrectly it could be rude as far as I'm aware let's see what the actual breakdown is here show answer pretty cool right Kona Kanji Da Kanji Da Kanji Dato Kanji Dato Omonda Omonda Kona Kanji Dato Omonda Hmm, pretty cool, right? It's talking about the tent. We need help on that one. Ah, this is the first one. So pretty much like, are you ready? Or excuse me, so mate, mate. That's gonna be our target here, mate. I don't know if our target's even set. So like some of these targets, Cards don't really hold a lot of meaning overall when it comes to like learning in the future. The targets are kind of broken in this deck. But at the very least, we're, we're learning a little bit. Um, I'm going to go back now to decks. So we still have a few more that are due. But I, I do want to get into a little bit of like some other things. I don't want to just sit here and... Uh, study the same deck the whole time. Uh, this is the Terrace House deck that I made. I'll kind of show you how it works. It's got the picture. It's got a mb3 of them saying the word. And it's got the expression. Um, these are generated by Morphman in the Amaya Japanese add-on. And then the meaning. Well, maybe. So we'll go in here, and for this deck, if we wanted to do a custom study on it, 10 more cards, study. Some of them don't work, so that's something I'm still working with, but a lot of them do work. So, ne kura, ne kura, e. So, be like, how much? Ne kura, e kura. So, Da would be our target there. How much? So weird. There's no, there's no sound. Uh, minori. Eh. So hey, minori. It's like someone saying hey to a person. Amazing. Eh. That's a good. Uh, magica, magica. Is that magic? No, Majika. I think Majiku. Ma, Majiku would be magic. But Majika. Seriously? Majika. Kawaii ne. So, like, uh, cute. You know, that's cute. Like asking someone that's, if that's cute, you know. Na. Na hikari ni. Shna, shini. I have no idea what that could mean. Mm. Hikari. So hikari means bright. Shini would mean like movement. Ni would be movement. All this brilliance. All this brilliance. Na hikari ni shini. I'll probably bury that one. 
Ne gra e. Hmm, we'll probably burn that one too. How much? We'll just say, uh, we'll say. Yeah, bury, here we go. We'll bury that one. Magica, seriously? Is it good? Nabeya. Nabeya kind. Pots and kettle. Nabeya kind. We'll come back to that one. Nabeya kind. Type this. So, like. Your personality type, or your type of person, I think, is probably... Yeah, is my type. Type of destiny. So, uh... Terrace House is about, you know, relationships and stuff, so, like, she's talking about her type. Type of destiny. Na... Hikari... Shini... So, like, all this brilliance, I think we're gonna go ahead and bury this card. Puru Arushi, Puru Arushi, Puru. I have no idea. Puru, pull, Puru. Okay, these are tar that target's a bad target. Should be going in here and editing these. Pudu Adushi, there's a pool. Pudu Adushi, there's a pool. Totashi nai Kyowa Imawa. I'm here now or something maybe? I don't right now. Ah, nai. I don't. So Watashi nai Imawa. So I don't right now. Whatever she was asked, she doesn't want to do right now. Watashi nai mawa. Ore ban ka. Ore wa. Hitori ban ka, maybe? I'm the first. Ore hitori ban ka. Hmm. Be wrong that could be right i wish i had any audio what the heck nabe yakan nabe yakan pots and pans tashi nai mawa i don't want to right now oreban ka i'm the first one minori e uh, amazing. Eh. Kawaii ne. Cute. Magica. Seriously. Type Desne. My type. Puru Adu Shi. There's a pool. If I could remember this kanji right now, it would be great. Nabe Yakan. Pots and pans. Pots and kettle. Watashi Naimawa. Not now. Mm, one more time on this. Ore Hitori Banka. Ore. Ore Hitori. Banka. Banka. Ore hitori banka. I'm the first one. So, we'll take a second and get out of Anki. Oops, what'd I do? Yeah, we'll, we'll take a break from Anki for a second. 
um, and we will move on to how I'm making these decks from Terrace House, from Akira Kurosawa's films. And before we do that, we're going to take a short intermission here. Um, I know that we all need, you know, intermittent breaks whenever it comes to study. So this will be that time. Uh, we'll take about five more minutes of a break, and we'll meet back up here. Easy as that. We don't need to do all of this at once. Let me set my timer again. Let's do six minutes. We'll start that. And I'll be back in a moment.
It would have been nice to have that section 2 made up at the right time. But that's okay. We've got it now. So we're back. And this next section here will be basically dedicated to showing how you can set up Anki and how you can make your own cards for yourself. So let's go ahead and get back into it. Uh, looks like my visualizer has failed us. I see why. Let's go ahead and exit this out. Music's going to stop for a second. I'm going to make up a, a thing real quick. Make sure that our visualizer still works. Our visualizer's back. Just something nice to have on. So from here we are going to go ahead and check out some of the details within Anki. Um, having to do with Morph Man and having to do with MIA Japanese. Which I don't think I explained up front. MIA just stands for Mass Immersion Approach, which is what uh, Yogu M Yoga MIA and Matt vs. Japan are all about. You can check them out on Patreon or here on YouTube. Links will be down in the description about what the MIA approach is all about. Basically, mass immersion approach just means that at a certain point during your Japanese study, you stop using your native language to learn your second language. Um, we're not there yet. My whole approach here is getting us to that point. So, we'll go into MIA Japanese settings. See if that pops up for us. It doesn't. That's okay. The screen might go black again, but you know, we'll, we'll just keep messing with this kind of thing as time goes on. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to be here at all now, which is okay. I'm going to go ahead and make it pop up here for us. Just a little bit smaller. And these settings here are going to allow us to add the colors and stuff that I've been using. So using the active fields section of this, uh, all of my cards are fitting under currently the MIA Japanese or a clone of that MIA Japanese Substess RS, which I've just added an audio field to. Uh, the MIA Japanese card type comes from, or the note type comes from the MIA Japanese uh, add-on. So that, that add-on, let me see here, looks like, the card type I mean looks like, and why Japanese has these fields in it. Go to our field browser real quick. These are the fields that are currently in our MIA for Japanese. We have 
sentence expression, reading, meaning, screenshot, and target. Um, the target has to be there for Morph Man to work. But other than that, screenshot, meaning, reading, expression, and sentence are all you really need for the MIJ. MIA Japanese add-on to work. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to go into cards here. Uh, this is going to be the most convoluted screen that you see tonight. Let me get one more thing put up. I can't believe this didn't work. So this was working all day. And now I'm re-adding them to make sure, make sure that they, they show up tonight on this stream. So this card window here is a gnarly mess. If you've never messed with um, JavaScript or CSS or HTML or anything like that, um, you can get lost quickly. But you don't really have to mess with it so long as the template is set up correctly. And you uh, let a lot of the things be automatically generated from the Morph Man or MIA Japanese add-on itself. Uh, you'll see here, all of this is auto-generated stuff. All of that. So you don't have to touch any of that. Just a bunch of a mess. The things that you do need to worry about are up in here. And even this stuff will be auto-generated, so you can just change out what tags, sentence, reading. Um, there's a lot of tutorials that I can link to here. Um, but mostly I will recommend uh, MIA Mavers Japan and also Dave from Otaku to get the gist of all this if you've never seen anything like that before. Um, the thing here is that this is what our cards are going to look like. It's going to have the sentence on the front. That's why I only had the sentence. Uh, whenever you flip it over, it comes with the expression, which is the colored text that I was using, plus the meaning, which is the English translation as well as the screenshot, which was the screenshot from the game, the text dump from the game. You'll see that same... Oops, I just totally closed out of it. That's funny. I'll try not to do that. Uh, so, let me get that back open. <laughs> what a mess. Well, there's my visualizer. For no reason. Ah. Oh. What a mess I've made. Okay, what a absolute mess that made just now. Okay, we're back with Anki. Uh, you'll see the Akira Kurosawa uses a similar deck. The only thing that it adds is an audio file, an audio field. So if I go into one of these here, uh, it has the expression. The reading um, is not used, it goes to meaning. The reading and the expression are going to be the same. So the colored text is on the actual front of the card. Um, and then there's an mp3 ripped from the video file. Oh, uh, what happened? Did I add the reading? I don't think I added the reading. But we'll go to Browse. Akira Kurosawa, Yojimbo. And we'll preview some of these cards. And there's actual sound with all these, as well as the, the image. And you can tell that the, the audio is pretty weird. Uh, you can barely hear him say Nanda. Nanda. But he says Nande. Nande. <laughs> so, with these old films, you're going to get some mistranslations. Like, the, the subtitles aren't going to be exactly as the scene uh, calls for. Nanda. Nanda. Chotto. Chotto. So, Chotto doesn't mean we got to talk. Chotto just means small. But Chotto, in a, in a proper context, can mean that we need to talk. Nani? Nani? What? Yeah. So, we have all of these to play with, uh, and I've, I've personally made this deck using Substats RS, 
And that's really what we're gonna, that's what we're transitioning into now, is how we can make our own tools. Let me get browser back up too. Can't believe all this stuff just fails. So inside of our inside of our browser, we have all these fields: uh, the expression, the sound file, the picture, and what it means. And then at the very bottom, Morphman takes care of the tags for us because we fed it the right stuff to begin with. which is all under Morphman preferences. Wow, every single one of my windows is failing right now. That's crazy. That's perfectly fine. So Morphman uh, knows that we have these card templates And that each of the fields that we need to that we need to do um, morphs on, which would be like the Japanese uh, diagraphs plus pitch accent, will be highlighted in these fields. And it tells the the card itself how to, or it, it puts the it, it automatically generates the JavaScript CSS for our card types, so we don't have to worry about any of that. The only thing I've changed here is that I've changed the focus morph to target. That's why each of my cards has a target. And then these are where the tags come in. I plus 1, I plus 0, I plus 0 0.5, I plus 2. Already now in priority, uh, these are all fields that can be added and removed from any card. And then the card will be reshuffled in a, in a context that's built for learning. So we're actually going to go ahead and shut down Anki for now. Wild. The way this is working is getting wild. So let's get rid of a few of these things here. We're back to our PDF. Get rid of that. So now we got a blank screen ready for what we should do first is yeah but you know what let's get into it we're going to go ahead and open up an all new file So this uh, video file here is the lowest quality you can get from Netflix, and we're not going to watch very much of it. Um, this is going to be the the file that we're, we're working from uh, for Terrace House. This is the opening for the very first episode that was aired on Netflix, and we're going to take the subtitle ripped from it and make it uh, with screenshots, make it an, into an Anki deck. Uh, I already do have the Terrace House uh, first deck, but we're going to turn it into uh, we're going to turn the second episode into a deck now. So before we go too much further in that and get ourselves banned from YouTube forever, we're going to go ahead and start up a few extra programs here. Um, the main one for this process is going to be uh, subtitle edit, which I'll open up now. See if it just works. Good deal. It did just work. Imagine that. Uh, let's see if I can't get some white behind there too. What would that be under? Let's pull this down, way down. And 
and remove the images and just use the white. That's fine. <laughs> Looks silly, but uh, we're going to go ahead and use that. Start this back up so we have the music playing still. All right, so this program here. is how I've gone about grabbing uh, the the subtitles themselves, exporting the subtitles as an SRT, and then re-importing the SRT into Aegis subs, or sorry, not even Aegis subs, uh, into uh, subs to SRS. So we're going to go for, uh, we're going to come back to this program here. Yeah, we're going to come back to this program here in just a few moments. Firstly, we're going to go finally use our our uh, web page here that I have loaded, and we're going to go into Netflix. So we're going to use B Stars actually for this one because we're going to do it all from scratch. So we're going to make a Anki deck for B-Stars. The way we're going to do that is I have this script here from uh, Yoga, MIA. I'm going to come into Netflix, hit F12, open up the, the console here, paste right into the console. Cannot read property. Timed out. Okay, so let's give it a refresh. We'll try it again. Okay. That didn't work this time for some reason. It worked just really simply the last time I did this. Let's go to episodes maybe. Maybe that's where I'm messing up. There it goes. And so now if I hit F12, you can see it go through. It's going through each of these by itself and it just downloaded me a text file. If I up, if I up, uh, open this text file up, it gives me a couple of links. It gives me links to every single one of these episodes, 12 links all together, which there's no reason for me to show that. So I have it opened in a text file uh, where I have just a bunch of these, a bunch of links to subtitle files. If I go back into uh, another program here, called Flix Grab. Let's see if I can't get that pulled up on screen too. Do I have Flix Grab ready? I tried having all these ready. Maybe I don't have FlixGrab. Let's just go ahead and recapture it. So the FlixGrab program will... This is my... My stuff from earlier when I was doing the, net, uh, the uh, Terrace House stuff. We're going to go ahead and paste oh yeah that's they're gonna be the wrong thing I thought there was a way language. We'll do uh, Japanese first. I know you can't see some of the UI elements, but that's okay. We need to go back into the text file and it should be fine just to paste the whole URL. This, this next one here should be, let's just get rid of all these. 
Let's get rid of all these. And then we'll do a paste URL. Give it a second to catch up here. There was a way I added a whole folder earlier, and that's really what I was trying to get at, but I just can't figure out how I did it. So paste the URL. And it'll give us Beastars Episode 1. That's really all we're after is Beastars Episode 1 anyway. So then we hit download on that. We can see it's going to be in Japanese subtitle. That's what we want. It's going to be the lowest quality video track because we're just going to be creating screenshots from it anyway. Let this download for a few minutes. As soon as this finishes up, we will do the same thing for the English subtitles. So I've already got my same video copied. Go to Settings, Subtitle Language, select English this time, paste URL.
and I should be able to show my file folder here, but maybe not. Oh, it's all different. Beastars has a different kind of subtitle file. It's okay. It's not so different. Okay. So we'll go back to... Subtitle edit here. And we'll open up the subtitle file. In Japanese. Do we have that open? Okay, let me open up this window in OBS here. So this is the OCR window. And for OCR, we need to set it to specific settings. If you on Japanese, obviously, Tesseract 5 is the one I had uh, best luck with. Binary image compare was what is set to currently. Um, so I set it to 5.0. Um, and we should just be able to hit OK. All right, start OCR. That's what that's what we got to do. Start OCR. It's going to go line by line by line by line. And it's going to fill out uh, the the OCR readings of these, what, what end up being image files. So we let this do its thing for a few minutes. While this happens, we're actually going to go ahead and play the first couple of lines of Beastars, just so we might be able to to figure out something while we're waiting. Doesn't seem like there's a lot of text in the early. So there's not. So there's text there, but there, 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 it's not the. It's not subtitle text. So we need to look out for that kind of thing.
So those are the kinds of things that uh, we'll, we'll be able to compare with the, the initial text that we received from this OCR. Now, this might seem like super advanced, but I think the best way to learn is in context with the things that you're, you're motivated to learn. Um, if we wanted to watch a movie, say, uh, Yojimbo, or if we wanted to watch an anime, say, Beastars, or if we were really itching to finish up uh, Terrace House, which I kind of feel pressured to, then we would we would sit down and make all these these decks and make sure that when compared to a frequency list, we're learning in the correct way for the things that we want to learn. And this is exactly what it takes to to make that kind of stuff on your own. Uh, but doing so is very rewarding. You can find yourself like making huge strides doing this kind of thing. It's easy enough for popular things to go find a, a shared deck and then run it against its own frequency list. But uh, this way you're you're taking in a show of any kind and you're running it against a frequency list of all types of similar shows and letting Anki figure out what order it needs to present them to you in. So this is going to take a minute, so we're just going to let it sit. I'll be back in a minute.
Okay, so we got that. We're gonna hit OK. It auto fills everything that we needed. We'll go ahead and save that. We'll call that. I know you can't see this part, but we're gonna call that S1E1 B stars. And it's gonna save it automatically as an SRT. And don't worry about it so much just right now, but SRT is the format that we can work with with SR, uh, SRS to subs. Sorry, subs to SRS. So if I can find it, um, I should have the English subtitle file too. So we'll also open that after saving. Open. B stars English. And then it auto populates because it doesn't need an OCR. And then we'll just save that again as well. We'll save as, I believe. In the same folder, we'll call that S1E1 B stars ENG. And we are done with that program. And we're done with the Netflix grab, the Flix grab program too. And it automatically tried to pick up whatever it could. So let's just exit out of all this. Oh, you know. OPS just tries to get wild on us. Back to black. And we will open up subs to SRS now. So subs to SRS is a program that will take your language target file, uh, subtitle file. They'll take your, your uh, reference material, which is what I have playing in the top left there. It'll also take our English subtitle file and it will do a bunch of comparisons and it will spit you out a bunch of SRS decks in a, t a tab separated file format, which then we can import into Anki. And if you wanted to, you could export it again in an APKG format. So without further ado, let's go ahead and select our target language subtitle file, which was what I mentioned, S1E1-BStars. We're going to select our directory where we want it to output, which is going to be just the same FlixGrab directory I was working from before. The subtitle file in our native language, which is going to be the ENG file, s one a one bstars eng And then the video that it corresponds with which should be right then and there, S1E1, B stars, Moon, the Beast. We're going to make sure that's UTF-8 on both encodings. Audio stream is Japanese. Um, we can change the dimensions of the screenshots. I don't need anything more than 240 by 160. That's perfectly fine for me. And we'll just name the deck. Uh, we'll name this B stars. And go. Let me make sure that the window is capturing correctly. Oh, it is. Okay, good deal. So you can see right about here is uh, where it's extracting the audio from the file, from the video. This will take about probably a couple more minutes. It shouldn't take too long. But whenever we're done, we'll have a, a file we can import into Anki.
that's what we like to see is less than 250 screenshots it means less than 250 decks or cards were made for this deck the way i look at it is that our deck say we want to watch this episode in two weeks our deck needs to be made to consume as much as possible in that two weeks if we were to look at 10 cards per day uh, for two weeks, we end up with 140, right? So if we look at 20 cards a day for two weeks, we end up at 280. So we're right there in that sweet spot where if we if we studied 20 cards a day for two weeks and we really put our mind to it, we would be able to watch this episode. Uh, so we would only be two weeks behind the current subbed uh, program that's playing. Say you're watching a simul dub, but you need, you know, for yourself two weeks to catch up to the point where you you feel like you are uh, able to to view that content. I do want to put this in here too. Let's see if I can. Another black screen coming in. There we go. So this is what we're going to be presented with after we're done is the the first field is tag the second field is sequence marker the third field is audio clip fourth is snapshot fifth is line from japanese sixth is line from english so my subs to srs deck pretty much already puts this stuff in order but i am going to take a screenshot just in case i forget and i'm going to leave that right there even if it does degrade uh, over time and we're going to open up the file that it created in Anki real quick Maybe. Uh, let's just see here. Netflix seems to have logged out on me. Anki's back up and running. I'm going to do an import. So we get a BStars TSV is what we're importing from. So the tab separated file is what we're what we're impor actually importing from here. Uh, we're going to make sure that it's the MIA Japanese. We're going to change the deck. We're going to add a deck, and we're going to call this deck. Oh, you can't see this. Um, it's going to be called BStars. Separated by tab. Import even if note has the same first field. Allow HTML, sure. Uh, so field one, let me open up this tab separated file real quick. Open this in calc. 
LibreOffice Calc is a free alternative to Excel. So we're going to open with Not sure why it's not in here, but we're going to get rid of that real quick. Calc. And yeah, I know you can't actually see all this that I'm doing, but as long as you have Calc, it will show up in that list. There we go. And I do have calc as a window here. So we'll go to that should do it. No. That's my Libre deck or my Libre overview. My Libre office overview, I mean. Close after that. We'll come back to it later. I'll just say okay. Sure, why not? Maybe it will take over automatically. Alright, so let's just straighten this up a little bit. Things just get, keep getting more and more wild on us. I don't think it's going to be easier than this, so we will just keep looking at it small like this. I'm sorry. We'll just make it at least a little bit bigger. So our first field is B stars 1. Uh, we don't need that. Our second field is some kind of timestamp for uh, H subs. Our third is going to be our mp3, our fourth is our image, our fifth is our line, and our, uh, yeah, so our first, second, third, fourth, fifth is our line, sixth is our English. So our fifth is going to be our expression, sixth is going to be our English, fourth is going to be a screenshot, third is going to be our mp3. That's all we really needed to know. When we go back into when we go back into here where we're at already, we'll say first and second are ignored. Our third is going to be our sound. Oh, you can't see this, dang. wild how many things like worked whenever I was testing this earlier compared to now. So first and second are nothing. We don't need those. But our third we need to map to reading. Our third is going to be our. Our third is going to be our MP3. All oh, right, we need to change this to sorry SRS. Uh, so our third is going to be our uh, audio. Nothing. Nothing. Ignore. Audio screenshot. Expression. Wow, things are so, so, so messed up. And then our fourth will be our meaning, our English reading. So, sorry to make any 
extra confusing kind of kind of steps that didn't really need to be there. But uh, our first and second fields were ignored because it was our title and our uh, section of the video. So we can ignore those. Our third field was the sound. Um, we had an mp3 file associated with uh, our fourth field, which was an image. And then our fifth and sixth field were the, uh, the Kana expression versus the English subtitle file. So that should be all we need. We're going to go ahead and hit import. The first field must be mapped. Uh, let's see, we'll just... We'll map it to tag, because why not? Whew. Things are getting really messy. Really messy. Let's just go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. Holy cow. That's not supposed to be how it works, but it, it worked. Um, so we now have B stars in here as an MIA uh, SRS deck, subst SRS deck, which is just the MIA Japanese add on plus an audio field. Which the MIA add on has an audio field, but goodness gracious, we got there. Uh, let's make sure that our our deck works. It doesn't have audio. You know, that's... Oh! It doesn't have the image. That's why. So we'll go back out to decks. <laughs> okay, so uh, Flix Grab puts everything into a folder that you wanted it to be in. But I put it in the wrong folder. So I'm going to take everything that was in the name that I gave it, bstars, uh, dot media. It's a dot media folder. Let's see if I can't just pull this in real quick, just so I can actually talk about what I'm showing. There we go. So in my Explorer window here, I'm taking everything that was in my G video FlixGrab BStars media folder. This is where all my FlixGrab stuff is. If I take everything from here and I cut it into G video, nope, it's actually going to be uh, percent app data. Anki2, Mac, Collection Media. I've just cut, cut and pasted it into here. There's that. Exit out of this. Now, if I go back in to study B stars, study. You can actually hear that audio. Um, let's go ahead and pause this for now. Pause the music. So... That's not right. That can't be right. So I think this might be one of the intros. So that's what I was saying. Like, make sure that what what's shown in the, the text and the subtitle file is correct with the the car that you're going for. So we're going to go ahead and say no because... Okay, 
I don't think that's right either. So we're going to go ahead and say... Known. Okay, okay. So this is totally correct. So something about seriously he's eating classmates. Are you seriously going to eat my classmate? So that's nice. Um, we don't have kanji highlighting going on here. Which is something that I'm going to try to address here. Go into Japanese settings. Fields. Let's go into browse real quick. Why well, browse not even working? Boy, oh boy, things break quick. Okay, so we're in browse. In expressions, we need to. That's what it is. So in expressions, we need to go through B stars, Control A, on the <clears throat> on the fields here. Up in edit, we'll go to generate readings, accents, and audios, and we'll select expression. We'll select the destination as expression, and we'll deselect graphs and audio. I know you can't see this, but we'll have also hit overwrite and hit execute. And that's going to change all of our expression fields to have the digraphs and uh, pitch accents on them. Not not just digraphs, but like uh, breakdowns in kanji and, and expressions. So now, so now they'll have the... Oops, you can't see that. In the preview. So in the preview, we'll have this breakdown, which is super wrong. This one's wrong. We should just delete this card. So you're seriously going to eat my classmates? Is this? And we get a little bit of a, a preview, so we can associate the sentence with the scene. And we also get a little bit of hover, a little bit of hover text here with the pitch accents. But some of these things are not highlighted, so we would want to go ahead and hit Control S and look those up. We might make actually like uh, vocab decks out of these if we wanted to. Weird. That's also not showing up now. Holy cow. Holy cow. Okay. There we go. So our uh, dictionary here would be would show us the things that are not highlighted. So we would we would need to do some like breakdowns of this to make a like a, a proper uh, vocabulary list. But for now, 
we would have these definitions at the very least taking, taken from the, the actual translation of the file. And now if we go back, if we start over on our, our preview here, we might hear some of these files that we've, that we've listened to already. So this is obviously our character here that we've been listening to so far. Let's just go ahead and add our subtitle file. So those are the, the lines that we just heard in our Anki deck. And he says we took class together. So this method is how we can easily learn uh, our kanji and context as long as we go the extra step to make a, a vocab effort uh, for each of these kanji that we maybe don't know. Which I don't know, I think that means like love or something. It probably doesn't even mean love, to be honest. It just looks similar to the one that I know as love. But uh, so like each of these kanji have a, have a different meaning on their own. But in context, we, we can learn them as vocab. <laughs> And the best thing to do here is not learn them one by one um, in order of appearance. It would be to come up to MIA, or uh, sorry, Tools Morphman Recalc after the after the database has been you know stuck together correctly, and then it, Morphman will put them in the appearance of awesome. it just reordered them in order of uh, appearance versus the target of the card so say we say we want to learn this episode but we also want to learn it in in our in our uh, i plus one method because i plus one is how we how we actually learn day to day we don't want to learn you know, scene after scene after scene, and memorize them in, in like a full 30 minute episode. We want to know that we know these kanji when we move on to our next deck. Uh, the I plus one method will then resort them compared to a frequency list. So now we've just completely shifted uh, the the cards in order of frequency and usage across all of Netflix's shows. And it seems like this one here That one here is due because we said it was good. Whew, that's a big one. いや、いいて。のけもの。のけもの。のけもの。何見てんだ。だ、だから。These are going to be the ones that we can probably figure out pretty easily. はい。はい。来い。
この時俺が出会ったのはいつも。Learning.、Uh, so, like, if, I mean, Morphean is not going to let me lie to myself, right? It's going to tell me, hey, you don't know this card, so we're going to push it down to the bottom, even if it's the intro to this show. And that's kind of how you want to keep testing yourself, in my opinion. We're going to move on from here and we're going to start up our music again. But that's, that's like the, the crux of what I wanted to get at today. Is that even, even using self made methods, it can be a, a much easier process than it might seem up front? Where, you, you know, I sat down a, lot, a long while back and thought, oh, well, I guess I'll just write 200 cards by hand and it'll take me all day. And I'll study those 200 cards throughout the next couple of weeks. But、uh, it can really. You, you can really make it hard on yourself, or you can let the program work for, yourself, work for you and not have to do so much work on your own.、Uh, I guess the remaining like 30 minutes that I have here, I'll go through and shout out a lot of the people who have inspired me to do all this. We haven't even touched on Aegis Sub. Because there's not really a reason to use Ega Sub just yet. But we will we'll write our own subtitle files eventually. That's like my goal, is to just like, sit down, listen to a thing, and write a subtitle file for it. And then compare that to where we're at. Like, compare that to the actual translation file that's available. So we'll move away from this. Oh, he's black. We will take away the video preview wall. We'll get Chrome back up. There we go. And we'll just go through.、Um, I want to visit Mass Immersion Approach real quick.、Uh, so, this guide here is going to pretty much put you on the right path. Everything that I've talked about today, we're just going to let it scroll, auto scroll. And you're probably not going to read much of it, but、um, should look things up. My opinion on that is you should look things up after you don't know it.、Um, you test yourself, do you know it?、Uh, active listening comes first whenever it comes to looking things up. Can you listen to it two or three more times and then get the, get the gist? Or do you need to look it up right away? How much should I immerse? In the beginning, I don't think you should immerse 100%. I think you should grow to a point where you can immerse 100%. And that requires a lot of vocab.、Uh, Matt goes into a lot of detail about his quick start guide、uh, about Netflix and YouTube.、Uh, I think this is later on. 
I really encourage you to, to check out Matt vs. Japan on all this. Um, and then he, he has just so many topics about how you can you can get into it for yourself. Um, the mass immersion approach, in my opinion, starts with a, um, a partial immersion approach where you are listening to as much as possible. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're still watching in subtitles. Um, you're still looking up a lot of translations. The, the full immersion approach, the mass immersion approach, really, you're, you're looking up in a, a Japanese to Japanese dictionary. You are listening to Japanese without subtitles. You know, it's, it's, it's a step above where we're at. Uh, from here, I also want to recognize a day from otaku. Let's just open that up. Can I? No, can't. So, day from otaku, otaku um, is going to be another resource for like how to get your Anki deck set up correctly. Um, before I get too far ahead of myself, I do I, I want to go over the the resources that I can't recommend, which are Japanese Pod 101 and Wani Kani. So Japanese Pod 101 is a paid resource as well as Wani Kani. Um, it's super good. It it is very nice to have. We're gonna go ahead and pause the music again just to listen to some of the dialogue. Uh, from this Nihongo Dojo lesson from uh, Japanese Pod 101. It's from their JLPT five in five uh, JLPT in five master course. Uh, and the dialogue just goes like this. Where can you go in Japan that leaves you feeling more beautiful inside and out? Peter here. Naomi des. Naomi Sensei, we are back, and last week we covered e ending adjectives. And this week we're going to cover. Na ending adjectives. And we kind of touched on this a bit last week. Now, na adjectives get their name from the fact when they are placed in front of a noun, they need to be followed by na. na. So it winds up like this. Adjective, na, noun. noun. So this is where they get their names from. So we're going to go into this in great detail in the latter part of the section, the grammar section. For now, today's conversation takes place where? Style you no hair salon. At the hair salon. Conversation is polite Japanese. Fuyuka and Shu are co workers. They're speaking polite Japanese. All right. So, with that said, let's get into today's lesson. Shizuka desne. So desne. Koko wa itsumo shizuka deska? 静かじゃないです。今日は特別です。冬香さんの髪はまっすぐですね。とても綺麗です。そうですか。髪だけですか。え、いやいや。もちろん冬香さんも綺麗です。どうも。もう一度お願いします。今度はゆっくりお願いします
静かじゃないです。今日は特別です。冬香さんの髪はまっすぐですね。とても綺麗です。Never quiet. Today is special. You have straight hair, Fuyuka. Your hair is very beautiful. そうですか。髪だけですか。Is that so? You meant my hair only? え、いやいや、もちろん、冬香さんも綺麗です。は、huh? ?Oh no! Of course! You are also beautiful, Fuyuka. どうも。Thanks! Naomi sensei, what did you think of today's lesson? いい言葉とフレーズがありますね。There are a lot of good phrases and words. Definitely. And we're going to take a closer look at some of them right now. So, first we have. 静か Quiet. Peaceful. 静か静か So, this one, what's going on here with the pitch accent? The pitch goes down. 静か Shizuka. So, so uh, start high, then down low. Hi, so this. Shizuka. There's a gold medalist called Shizuka Arakawa. The figure skater. Hi. Of course, everybody knows her. The meaning of her name is quiet fragrance. Ah, <laughs> interesting <laughs> combination of Chinese characters there. So, this. Ne. Next, we have. Itsumo. Always. Itsumo. Itsumo. Again, high to low. はい、そうです。Starting out high on the E and then down low. はい。いつも。そうです。Followed by? 特別。Special. 特別。特別。Now, I'm really starting to get the hang of this because you just, I know you started out low there and went high on the second syllable and stayed high. はい、そうです。特別。Now, this is a na adjective. Shizuka is also a na adjective. そうです。Next we have. Kami. Hair. Kami. Kami. Going up. Kami. So this ne. Kami has homonyms, which means paper. Ah. Is paper the same or? Hai. Onaji des. Same. Going up. Hai. Kami. Kami. Ah. So you have to kind of gauge which one they're talking about by the context of the s e n t e n c e So, no, tori des. So, des. So, paper hair, which sounds a bit strange, but paper hair is kami no kami. Kami no kami. So, des ne. Interesting. Okay, next we have. Matsugu. Straight. Matsugu. Matsugu. Next we have. Kire. Beautiful. Kire. きれい。Now, this is an adjective that ends in e, but. But it's actually na ending adjective. Yeah, it's actually a na adjective.、Hi. So this is one you're just gonna have to remember. If you're gonna say beautiful pen, <laughs> きれいな pen. <laughs> What a beautiful pen. <laughs> Now, here's a way that should help you to remember it. Before we go on over the e adjectives, All of the e adjectives, the last syllable is a hiragana e. But with this word, kire, it's actually two kanji characters. Ah. That final e is not dangling or it belongs to a kanji character. So in that sense, it's not an e adjective. Sugoi. And that's why we follow it with na when it's placed in front of nouns, therefore making it a na adjective. なるほど。<笑> Now, some people out there might be saying, you know, I still don't really get this na adjective. Well, hang on just a bit longer because we're going to go into detail when we go through this conversation. So just a bit longer. And what about pitch accent for this word? きれい。きれい。Starts high, going down. きれい。そうです。Next we have? だけ。Only. だけ。だけ。This is followed by? もちろん。Of course. もちろん。もちろん。Now, even though this is a newbie lesson, I just fascinated by this word. I believe this word comes from China.、はあ、as do, well, actually, many words <laughs>、ね、in Japanese come from China. Now, the kanji for もちろん is not written very often. そうですね。But in papers or someone writing Sometimes some people do use it. It's kind of a very high level word. So, you know, if you're listening to this newbie lesson, you're going to learn kanji that you could find in the PDF 
that probably your fluent friends may not even know. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is mochido means of course, but the kanji in this means that literally means no argument. So when you extrapolate, it means there's nothing to be said, and therefore, of course. So the kind of thinking behind this phrase is it's of course because there's nothing I can say. Hence, mochidon. Naruhodo. This is a really good one. Sugoi. So deska. Shiranakata d e s I didn't know that.、Wow. Come on. Now you're just being nice, Naomi sensei. Sugoi, sugoi. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the dialogue. Okay, first we have. Shizuka d e s ne. It's quiet, isn't it? Literally, we have. Shizuka. Quiet. d e s Is. Ne. Right? It's quiet. Now, with this one, we don't need the topic because the speaker is speaking about a range that can be heard. And so the other person is, can easily understand that they're talking about the noise or that, they, that he's referring to this place. Now, I think this is the perfect time to introduce everybody and to clear up what a na adjective is all about. Now, notice how a na adjective, shizuka, is a na adjective. But when it's followed by des, There's no na. So some people may be wondering, well, I don't really get it. But as we said in the previous lesson and in the beginning of this lesson, the na adjective, that na appears when the na adjective is placed in front of a noun. So let's just try that. What word can we use? Naomi sensei? Classroom. And how do we say that in Japanese? Classroom. Or we could say? Kyoshitsu. Okay, let's use a kyoshitsu. It's, it's not difficult? Okay. It's okay. Okay. 教室 Okay. Okay. So we have classroom. Hi. Now, let's use the pattern we used last week. That noun followed by wa, followed by an adjective, followed by des. And we're going to use classroom and quiet. So we get the sentence. 教室は静かです Literally, classroom quiet is. The classroom is quiet. Again, we have the na adjective, but there's no na. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that na adjective and put it in front of the noun. Now, watch what happens. Shizuka na kyoshitsu. Quiet classroom. That's where that na appears. So, this is So, tokubetsu na hito means special person. And yeah. again, we have the na in there. And if you want to say Peter is special, <laughs> <laughs> Peter san wa. And if you want to say Naomi sensei is a special person, Naomi sensei wa tokubetsu na hito desu. So Naomi sensei is a special person. So that na appears when the adjective precedes a noun. And hence, this is what all that talk about the na adjective is. Okay, it's not that bad. It all makes sense. And again, if you check out the PDF, it'll bring it all together. Next line we have. So this ne. That's right. So here it's not acting as a tag question, but it is kind of, well, I would kind of sum it up like this. The listener doesn't really have much to add at this point in the conversation, but is willing to keep listening. <laughs> so this ne. It's like, hmm, so this ne. It's like, well, I, I don't really have much to add to it's quiet here, <laughs> but you can keep trying. <laughs> So, not a tag question, but kind of showing the speaker's limited interest. This is followed by. ここ is it always quiet here? So, the first part is. ここ here. は Topic marking particle. いつも Always. 静か Quiet. です Is. か Question. Here, always quiet is. Is it always quiet here? Now, notice the order here. Topic established first, ここ wa, followed by, いつも adverb of time, followed by, 静か adjective, です coppola, か and question marking particle. Next we have, 静かじゃないです It's not quiet, or it's never quiet. Now, the main point here is, literally we have, quiet is not. Literally, that's what we have. And again, we went over janai in the past. And that was with nouns. Now, na adjectives 
are formed, the negative of na adjectives are formed exactly the same way as the negative of nouns. So if you remember in a previous lesson we had, it's not meat. Niku janai desu. You take the word for meat. Niku. And you follow it with. Janai. Meat, it's not. Des. And here the des is just to increase the politeness level. The same case here. The des here is just increasing the politeness level. Without the des, it's informal Japanese and maybe not appropriate for this situation. But what's going on here grammatically is we have the na adjective, shizuka, followed by janai, which is is not. So quiet, it's not. Quiet is not. And again, the fact that we're talking about here, which was mentioned in the previous sentence, is inferred. So if we had the whole sentence, textbook style, it would read like this. ここは静かじゃないです。Here, quiet is not. It's not quiet here. ここはいつも静かじゃないです。It's never quiet here. Okay, then this is followed by. 今日は特別です。Today is special. 冬かさんの髪はまっすぐですね。You have straight hair, 冬か。He could have said, あなたの髪はまっすぐですね。Yeah. But, yeah. He used Fuyuka's name instead of Anata. Yes, because most of the time in Japanese they use the name. Now let's look at the possessive going on here.、はい、We have Fuyuka san no. Fuyuka's. Possessive here. Fuyuka's. Kami. Fuyuka's hair. Wa. Topic marking particle. Masu. Straight. Des. Is. Ne. And again the ne. Let's look at the first part. We translate this as You have straight hair, Fuyuka. Again, Because in English, in this situation, we would call the person you. But in Japanese, it's the opposite. You use the person's name followed by the possessive followed by hair. A point of interest in this sentence is the ne. This last ne is another use. It's not a tag question, but it's adding emphasis to the statement. So here it's acting as an emphasizer. So again, it can be used to show interest, to be a tag question, and here emphasizing. Like probably the fact that. He didn't notice this before today. Ah, so でしょうね And now he's like, wow, you know, you have straight hair, Naomi. Next we have. とてもきれいです It's very beautiful. Now, literally, very beautiful is. とてもきれい Very beautiful is. But what are we talking about here?、Ah. Her or her hair? Ah,、uh, I think he meant. Fuyuka san no kami wa とてもきれいです Yeah, I, it's the hair.、はい、so it's not mentioned. And since we didn't change topic, it stays on the topic.、はい、and the topic is hair. Then we have. So ですか Is that so? 髪だけですか Only my hair? <laughs> 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 so, but literally, hair only is. Which kind of makes sense. Hair only is beautiful. <laughs> so we have literally hair. 髪 Followed by. だけ Only. This. Is. か Question. Hair only is? When you receive a compliment, you can use this、uh, grammar like, シャツ綺麗ですね。あ、シャツだけですかパンツかっこいいですね。あ、パンツだけですか Your shirt is cool. Ah, just my shirt? <laughs> Your pants are cool. Just my pants? Of course, and I, only with a good friends. But, yeah, and yeah. it's kind of like a, It works out very nice. So, this is as a joke. Yeah. Yeah. It works really well. Here we have just a noun followed by dake. Hi. There's also other ways to use this, but for now, we're going to stick with this. Again, check the PDF for a more detailed explanation on this and other things covered today. Next we have. Eh, yeah, yeah. Huh? No, 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 no. Like,、eh. no, hold on, wait. Yeah, yeah. We often use this. No, no. So, this is. Some people say, yeah, yeah. And some people say, yeah, yeah. This is followed by? もちろん Of course. 冬香さんも綺麗です You are also beautiful, 冬香 Hi. So we have the particle も in there. So finally we have? どうも Thank you. All right. So that is going to do for today. じゃあまた静かですね。そうですね。ここはいつも静かですか静かじゃないです。今日は特別です。
冬香さんの髪はまっすぐですねとても綺麗ですそうですか髪だけですかえいやいやもちろん冬香さんも綺麗ですどうも静かですねそうですねここはいつも静かですか静かじゃないです今日は特別です冬香さんの髪はまっすぐですねとても綺麗ですそうですか髪だけですかえいやいやもちろん冬香さんも綺麗ですどうも So, Japanese Pod 101 can really be like the most valuable resource if you use it correctly. But it's the cost that keeps me from recommending it.、Um, I'm trying to stay with this channel. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to keep on the path of least cost for the most bang for your buck. You know, free can be great too. Uh, so that's where we're at with this.、Um, the last thing I want to recommend is, well, not recommend, but、uh, show that it's out there is Wani Kani. I currently have 400 lessons, or not lessons, but reviews.、Um, this site is really good, but it also costs you $10 a month, or whatever it is. So.、Um, I'm probably going to get all these wrong because I haven't, I haven't actually used this website in、um, almost a week now.、Uh, where, whereas I had been using it for every day for seven months. So we're just going to see where, where this actually puts us.、Um, yeah, bad stuff. So, the, these, this kanji is actually more in context than you would think when compared to RTK. We're going to go ahead and do every, we're going to say every day here.、Uh, it's、uh, my jitsu. I'm pretty sure it's similar at least. My nichi. So, I got that wrong, but、uh, my, my nichi, we have the definition here. Um, if we wanted to, we could add notes, which we don't want to.、Uh, the reading explanation is that it's a jukogo, jukogo, jukugo, I never said that word out loud. It's a jukugo word, which means onyomi reading,、uh, which means that it has the nichi reading for a day. If we go down further, And、um, we get some context sentences. So, like, kanji is taught in context with these sentences. I study Japanese at a Japanese language school. I study every day in Japanese language school. Watashi wa mai jitsu, mai nichi go gakse, gaku ko ute wa. So. I'm, I'm kind of getting this here.、Uh, watashi wa every day. Okay, so watashi wa nihongo gaku ko de mainichi ben kyo shite mas. So I study every day at a Japanese language school. So these are the kinds of things that. From here, I would put it as a sentence in my Anki deck, which I had, hadn't been doing. I kind of disregarded Anki for the longest time.、Um, I thought Anki might be like, you know, lacking a whole lot. And it turns out it was. But with Matt's approach, MIA, Japan,、um, 
Matt vs. Japan's approach with MIA. The, the way you can use these sentences can really help in everyday usage. So you would maybe come from here uh, and then take it into Anki. So that's what I'm fixing to do with my approach with uh, Wani Kani going forward. Is that I don't think I'll take on as many lessons. Because as many lessons as I have is what got me to this ridiculous... Like, no one has seen. Ain't nobody doing 404 lessons in an hour. Or reviews. This, this is going to literally take me four hours tomorrow. Like, I wanted to get this video out of the way, this broadcast out of the way. So I can sit back and actually do all of my lessons, my reviews. And reset. I'm on a, I'm like at a place where I'm going to reset. Um... Not, I'm not I'm near, actually going to reset my progress. I'm not going to start at level 1 again. But I'm going to take this and let it go back down to 0. I'm going to force it back down to 0, however I can. And then I'm going to start making cards with these sentences, these context sentences. And maybe three cards, you know? There's going to be three sentence cards for this one kanji. Which means every day. Uh, my Nietzsche. You know... These are the kinds of things that it takes to to push yourself every day. Let's go to the next one. Uh, this means other. Uh, we can probably just call it yo, I think. Probably not then. Top. It just still means other. <laughs> but these are these are the things that we we need to make sure that we're we're getting correct. It's been literally a week, so I've probably for, forgotten a lot of this stuff already. Um, because it's not I plus one, some of it. And the thing is, making it I plus one. You know, not all 400 of, those, of these reviews are I plus one. That's just an, that's an impossibility. But this means spirited. Genki. Uh, this means headquarters, I know for sure, but I don't know the reading for it. So we're just going to let it ride. I just had it. Hone chop. I could have guessed that because that is the kanji for book. Hone. But you know, guessing is as good as it gets in some of these situations. Hone chop. If I was going to guess something, it was going to be hone chop. But I wasn't about to guess. Uh, this website is super good in that it teaches you all of the Joyo kanji with some context. I will preface context with some. Uh, it is not the context that maybe you want to learn it in. That's where it breaks down for people, is that it's not always the context that you need to teach uh, someone the, the proper usage. The right context is something that sticks out to you. Um, the whole first section of this video was dedicated to showing the proper context for yourself. My context uh, of learning would be a Terrace House, would be Yojimbo, would be Animal Crossing. These are the things that really stick out to me as things that I want to be doing by the end of the year. You know, uh, if, if possible, within the next three months. If at all possible, in like one or two weeks, like you need to be thinking about things that are that are possible to achieve within the shortest amount of time. And sometimes the shortest amount of time is unfortunately like months and months. But there are things that you can find that are within grasp for a couple of weeks. And that's what we're after. Uh, this Umare, you know, birthplace might not be the most frequent kanji uh, top other you know my nichi the ones that we just went through umare i just messed that up you know those might not be the most frequent for the the media that we're trying to consume so you don't have the frequency input for one economy that you might for Anki. But starting off with Anki, you don't have that either. 
It's really taking the good with the bad and running with what works. So far, Wani Kani has gotten me to the point where I feel like I know 200 kanji. And that's great. You know, if that's, if that's working for you, then perfect. Keep doing it. But also you can reach the same, as, the same results with Wani Kani in context, or uh, with uh, Anki in context through MIA and Morph Man. And I honestly think that this is where today's broadcast ends. I don't think there's much more I can say about anything like that. We're going to go ahead and take that back. And we're going to go into... Without the, t the timer... We're right back into it. And we're going to take section two out of there. So, um, anyone who has, g you know, this has helped, I want you to feel like you can ask me questions. This is something, I know it was like a super crash course today. Just like, maybe way too over the top. Uh, I might have missed a hundred things. This might have helped you. This might not have helped you. This might have put you further into the hole. But uh, as early study Japanese, you know, I feel like we, we're all in this together. Uh, we should be able to ask each other questions. If you, if you feel like you've gotten some help from this, that's awesome. I want you to stick around. Um, I'm putting together Discord still. We're all going to be here to answer questions, if that's the case. And um, I want you to also consider subscribing to Mavris Japan, Yoga MIA, and Dave from Otaku. So I'll have their links in the description as well. Uh, that's probably all there's going to be from this type of content this week. I plan on doing this every single week, but not in this depth. Uh, every week it's going to be more of a progress update. Uh, and if I have to, I'll revisit this video, to be honest. But for the most part, this is a, a starting point for all of us. If you're interested at all in language learning, hopefully this helped. If you're interested in Japanese language learning, stick around. We're all here together. Um, and going forward, just shoot your questions at me. If I don't have an answer, I'm going to tell you the truth, and I'm going to shoot that question to someone else who might have the answer. That's what it's all about, is learning from each other.